his word day and night. God says that we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So as an act of faith and being a doer of the word of God, come on, hold up your Bible and say it out loud. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible. So I make this confession that I will meditate therein day and night, Monday through Friday, on a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening. And because I do, my life is blessed. It's no more a mess. Now everything I touch, come on, everything I touch now turns to success. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, put your hands together and welcome all of those that are visiting us live, online, on Facebook and YouTube. Praise God. Uh, I especially want to give a, a special hello, Sister Jenny. She's been a, a visitor with us and is becoming a part of our faith family. She couldn't make it today, so she said, Pastor, I'm going to be on, so make sure Facebook is working today. Amen. So hello. And then all the way in the country of India, Sister Quintessa is watching live on Facebook. So put your hands together for Quintessa and Sister Jenny. Amen. Well, bow your heads for a word of prayer and let's go before God. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. And we ask you, Father, to shine the light of your word to us today by the Holy Spirit. Father, we come to you as little children, humbling ourselves before you. You know what we need in order to take that next step of faith in life. Take us to our next level. We humble ourselves so you can exalt us in due time. We're ready, Father. So speak to our hearts through your word. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, I'm continuing our series that's called Ask, Receive, Speak. And this is a series that's based out of the word of God from the gospel according to Luke chapter 11, verse 5 through 13. Uh, of course, he starts out talking about if you've got a friend and they ask you for something and it's not convenient, you tell them no, but because of their persistence, you go ahead and give it to them. And if you ask, you receive. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock on a door, you know, the door will be open. And then he starts talking about if, you, if your child asks you for something, you know, would you do it? Yeah, you'd do it. You wouldn't give them anything that hurt them. No, you wouldn't. And in verse 13, he says, if you then being natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will, the hev will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So this is a series about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how you receive the baptism. How do you get baptized with the Holy Spirit? You ask, you receive, and you speak. Praise God. Now, if you would then turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 11, as we look at part two today, which is receive. And our text today is Mark 11 and 22 through 24. In verse 22, it says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, what th whatever things you desire or ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, my assignment in this series is to teach you from the word of God about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and about speaking in other tongues. Now remember, you're not forced to get this. Listen to this. Millions upon millions of Christians don't believe nor are hearing what I'm teaching on today. Millions of Christians. So re remember, you're not forced to get this. You're not forced to understand this. You're not forced to do this. But if you love Jesus, then you should follow 
the direction that his teaching leads you. Amen? I'm ministering this by direction of the Lord because there's so many of us here at Faith Family and that are listening to this message that are not experiencing the fullness of the Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives because we have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Understand carefully, I didn't say you don't have the Holy Spirit. The day that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the Word teaches us that the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of you. The Father God is in heaven. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. But the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of every believer. The disciples were born again after Jesus was raised from the dead. While they walked with him for about three years or three and a half years, however much time, they weren't saved. They were followers of Christ, but they couldn't be saved until, they, until he died for their sins. Is that right? Well, after his resurrection, they believed that God raised him from the dead. They actually saw him. So they qualified then for what a person does to be saved. They believe in their heart that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead. They confessed that with their mouth, and they were saved. But notice Jesus tells these born-again believers, the, the apostles, wait until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In other words, they had received the Holy Spirit in them, but he told them now they need the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Amen? So, obviously, the Bible then must be teaching that there's an experience after being born again called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Another thing to notice is that Jesus is called the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. John baptized people with water. How many of you, by a show of hands, you've already been baptized in water? Come on, all over the audience, on the Internet. Amen. That's almost all of us, so many of us. Well, just like you have been baptized in water, Jesus wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that's not automatic. That's what he said when he meant in verse, in verse 13 of Luke chapter 11. He said, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In other words, it's not automatic. So you've got to want this. And again, you're not forced to do it. Just like God doesn't force you to give tithes, he doesn't force you. I get no amens on that. No, God doesn't force you to give tithes or to give offerings. He leaves that to you. But just because he doesn't force you to give your tithes doesn't mean you shouldn't tithe. And that's for somebody. Just because it's not a command in the New Testament that you must tithe. We don't see that in the New Testament. We know that's a part of their command in the Old Testament. But even before they were commanded, Abraham decided, I'm going to honor God. And God blessed him. And in the same way, God is no respecter of persons. When you give God a tenth of your income, he will cause the windows of heaven to manifest blessing upon your life. Amen? But you're not forced to do it. And in the same way, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and speaking in other tongues, you're not forced to, and it's so important to understand, you've got to want to. Amen. But did you notice that, that millions of Christians don't believe what I'm teaching? Why? Why is it that, you know, there's probably about 2 billion or more Christians on the planet, but very few in percentage actually are baptized with the Holy Spirit and speak with other tongues? Why is that? Well, the Bible says, how can they call on him in whom they have not, how can they call on him whom they do not believe? And how can they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how can they hear unless someone preached to them? And how can they preach unless somebody is sent? If you don't hear about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you won't believe for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you won't have it applied in your life. So thank God for those churches like Faith Family Church that are brave enough to take a few Sundays to teach on one of the most profound subjects in the Word of God. It is absolutely God's will that every believer 
be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Some people believe that it's for some and not for others. In Acts chapter 10, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, right before that happened, Peter had just said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. In other words, he's not going to cause some great benefit to be in your life and not in somebody else's life. And so it is with the baptism. It is for everybody. Amen. <clears throat> it's not just for some, as some believe. And it's not just for those who are mature in Christ. Amen. There are some people and that I've ministered to re recently. Matter of fact, uh, Brother White sitting here on the front row, um, you know, several weeks ago. He had been saved for over 23 years. He and his wife had been married for 25 years. They, he'd been born again most all of that time and hadn't been baptized with the Holy Ghost. How do you know he hadn't been baptized? Well, he didn't speak with tongues. And the Bible says, you know, that's the evidence of it. And sure enough, we prayed together. He received and began to speak after 23 years. And so how many of y'all know the baptism is not for the mature? It's for everybody, young and old, new, and those that have been in Christ for a long time. Amen. Now, after you, another uh, foundation in which I'm using to preach this message is this truth. After you are born again, after you accept Jesus in your life, there's two things that really need to happen. Number one, you need to be baptized in water. Amen. And number two, you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Did you notice that when you get baptized in water, what happens? When they, when they immerse you into that water and submerge you and you come up out of, what happens? Water gets all over you. And when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, what happens? Guess what? The Holy Ghost gets all over you. And that's a perfect picture of what happens when you're baptized. So if you're interested in learning how to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, then here we go. Are you ready? It's very simple. Ask, receive, and speak. So we saw in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, that you have to ask. And that is indeed the first step. The first step is ask, but I want you to notice you've got to ask by faith. James actually talks about when anybody comes to God for anything that you've got to ask in faith. Look at James chapter 1 and verse number 6. And in James chapter 1, verse 6, it says, but let him... Ask in faith, nothing wavering or without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Think about that for a moment, this verse. We just read that if you want the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life, Jesus said, how much more will the heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him? If you don't ask, then, you know, you won't have that experience. But notice what the Bible teaches. You, when you do ask for it, you've got to ask how, come on, in faith. Amen. You've got to ask without doubting. You can't be unsure about it. You can't be like, well, if, if, if you want this, come on. You have to ask how? In faith. And that's so important for you and I to understand when we're asking. And actually, each one of these steps, each one of these steps come by faith. For example, you have to ask by faith. But guess what? And we're going to talk about this today. You've got to receive by faith. And the third thing you've got to do is speak by faith. Now, I'll be able to get into the third part today, but I'm really going to finish it next week and we'll be done with the series. You do not, do not, do not want to miss next week's message. I mean, talk about seal the deal, the icing on the cake. I mean, wow, I'm so thrilled about it. Amen. But notice each and every one of these are by faith. Amen. You've got to ask by faith. You've got to receive by faith. And you've got to speak by faith. I want to focus on the receiving by faith part today. If you'll notice, you remember the story of Daniel when he saw some things in the word of God. You could go to Daniel chapter 10, 
Don't put the verse up yet. In Daniel chapter 10, he saw some things in the word that they weren't experiencing yet. And it seemed to be about that time. And so he did what we should do in your life. If you're not experiencing God the way that you see in the word that you should be experiencing him. In, 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 in other words, if you've been praying for things and haven't been getting the answers to your prayers. Come on, the Bible said you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. So most of us in the church, we know that if you need a bill to be paid, then you need to ask God for direction. Come on. You know that if something's not going right in a relationship, then you need to pray about it. How many of y'all know we need to pray? You know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Well, people in the world, they're not, they're not getting up and praying every day. They're not spending their hours in prayer for the things that they have need. They're working hard for their money, for my money, for my money. Come on. But you and I, we are the church. We have God on our side. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. So we, the church, know to pray. But if you've ever been in that place as a believer where you've been asking God to do something and praying for God to change something or praying for things to happen and it has not worked, then you need to pay attention to me. Because the Bible says that you ask and receive not because you're missing the mark some way or another. You're missing it. You ask and you receive because you ask amiss. Next week, you cannot, you cannot miss next week because I'm going to really finish that statement. But if you like Daniel, have seen things promised to you in the word of God and you're not yet experiencing it, what should you do? Like Daniel, you should go to God in prayer. So sure enough, he started praying. He prayed about it and nothing happened. He prayed about it and nothing happened. He kept in the, in the atmosphere. 21 days later, an answer comes. And notice in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12, notice in this answer, an angel appeared and said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I've come because of your words. When, when, when you talk about receiving something from God, you've got to do it by faith. And I want you to know when you ask God for something, he hears you. And if it's according to his will for your life, then he gives you the answer. No matter how long it takes for it to show up, you best believe. Can I use that kind of language? You better believe that he has answered you. So many of us, we ask amiss because we're not asking in faith. We asked him for this and it didn't, it didn't change. So we didn't think we got it because we asked and it didn't happen. There might be something holding up the answer, but it's not God. So you got to ask in faith. You've got to believe that he's given you the answer. And when you're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. So let's say you do what I'm teaching you. You want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, so you go to him and you ask him, Father, I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking you in faith. The second thing that you've got to do in prayer is you've got to believe that you received the baptism from that moment, whether you speak in tongues or not, whether this, the, this room spins around or not whether you get the chill bumps or not. Come on, somebody. It, it's by faith, not by feelings. We'll talk about that. But now notice somebody say from the first day. And that's, that's so important for you to get because of what the word is about, what I'm about to show you in this word. When you ask God for something, anything, if it's according to his will, he answers you immediately. Somebody say from the first day. Okay. Then he says, from the first day that you set your heart to understand. There's some of you in here that don't really understand what I'm teaching because you haven't heard this kind of teaching. Or you've heard other kind of teaching that's kind of unanswered and confused. You know what? I, I was thinking about this. If 1 Corinthians chapter 14 was written before Acts chapter 2, I don't think Acts chapter 2 would have happened. 
Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul gives some order to some things that were confused in the church and particularly about speaking in tongues. And he talks about when and how and what and why and so forth and so on. And so some people have taken what Paul has said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and totally confused it and misunderstood it. And the reason why I say I don't think that Acts chapter 2 would have happened because they all spoke with tongues and people heard them speaking with tongues and didn't understand it. If it had happened today in 1 Corinthians 14, if they had started speaking in tongues out loud in a public place, somebody would have been, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. If y'all don't speak in tongues, then somebody needs to interpret it. Because of what it says in 1 Corinthians 14. But thank God they didn't have 1 Corinthians 14 because they all started speaking in tongues. People round about them came and looked to see what's going on here. They heard some things and they magnified God. 3,000 people got saved that day because of move of God that wasn't regulated by man's ideas. See, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. What I've done for years is study this, and I'm kind of putting it in a three-week series so that you can understand it better. But even for yourself, you've got to study to show yourself approved so you can understand it. Amen? If you can rightly divide the word of truth, then you can wrongly divide it. Right? And so what, what, what we're doing in this series is laying it out line upon line, scripture upon scripture, so that you can rightly understand it. Amen? I need my hanky. That's my wife. Amen. Oh, I just had a moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody say from the first day. So the moment you ask, he answers. So what you have to do at that moment is believe you receive. Or in other words, you've got to receive the baptism by faith. The other thing you need to do, he said from the first day, you set your heart to understand and you humble yourself before your God. I want to challenge you. If you've heard some things about speaking in tongues, remember this. Jesus called a little child to himself one day and he said, unless you be converted and become like this little child, you will not enter into the area where God dominates it. Talk about entering into the kingdom of God. What is he saying? See, a child doesn't go through all of these uh, c uh, confusions. A teenager, he said, except you be converted and come as a teenager. How many of y'all know we're in trouble? Why? Because a teenager thinks they already know. Come on, and if you're sitting in here today and you're thinking you already know all you need to know about the baptism, I'm good with what I got, and there's no more that I need, then you're in a dangerous place. And then sure enough, you grow up as an adult and you realize you didn't know what you think you know. But notice he didn't say except you be converted and come, become like an adult. He said, become like a what? A little child. Approach this as a child. Yeah, you've heard this and you heard that and you read this and you saw that. But go to God in a state of humility. God, if there is more to the Holy Spirit than I have right now, I want that. Your word, God, says that if I draw near to you, that you will draw near to me. Let me ask this question. Can we experience more of God than we have already? The answer is yes. Even though God is everywhere, he's here right now. We can experience more of him. Why? Not because of what we think or because of what we feel. We can, we can answer the question because of what the word says. The word says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. How close to God can you get? Enoch walked so close with God that God took him because he pleased God. I don't know about you. I want more. And if there's more for me to experience in God and with the Holy Spirit and with the word of God, then I humble myself and I'm open to that. So even if I don't get it exactly right, if I'm not saying it the best way, humble yourself. Go to him and ask him because I can't baptize you. I can't give you the tongues to speak. Come on, I, I, I don't have a, 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 a pool of the Holy Spirit to immerse you into. That's Jesus' job. And if you want it, you can have it. And he said, 
your words were heard. Now, why is that significant? That's significant because God doesn't change. If he answered Daniel immediately, then he will answer you because of the book of Malachi. Malachi 1 and 6 says, for I am. Can you put up Malachi 1 and 6? I'm sorry. <laughs> when you've been here as long as we have, we kind of kind of kind of. In Malachi 3 and 6, it says, for I am the Lord. I what? I do not change. If he answered prayers for them immediately, then you can be rest assured that he answers today, immediately. How about this? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Come on, today, come on, and forever. If he baptized them, see, some people believe that speaking in tongues went out with the last apostle. Well, the funny thing is the last apostle hasn't died yet. Because he still gives the gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. So speaking in tongues has not ended. There will come a time when speaking in tongues ends. And that's when we are caught away and go to glory. But until that time, this ought to be a part of every believer's prayer life. He's the same. He doesn't change. What does that mean? That when you ask, he answers. That means if you ask for anything, he answers according to his will. Matter of fact, I can give you some more scripture. Thank God for a church like this that gives you the word. Come on, give me another scripture. In 1 John chapter 5, I love it, man. Brother Percy got his notes. He's taking them. Amen. In 1 John 5, 14, this works concerning anything that you ask concerning his will. This is the confidence that we have in God that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? Now, God does not hear, I almost have to slow down to say this, the prayers of sinners. The only prayer that he hears from a sinner is the sinner's prayer. Is, is, is them acknowledging him as God, Jesus as his son, and that Jesus was raised from the dead. Other than that, talk to the hand because the ears ain't listening. You can be in an auditorium. If there are ungodly people there and they bow their heads for a moment of silence, that's all it was, was a moment of silence. If a sinner prays to God, he doesn't hear. I'll give you another scripture. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people, which y'all gonna help me preach in here if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face then i will hear from heaven i'll forgive their sin and i'll heal their land what does that say that means god's not listening to all prayers but if you are a believer if you have accepted jesus as lord of your life if you ask anything according to his will he hears you. Verse 15 says, verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the answer, the petition that we asked of him. I get so excited. I actually have to work back, slow down and make sure you get this. So as a believer, if you have a situation on your job and you need it to be worked out, if you've been trying to do business in an area and it seems like a door is closed, if there's something going on in a relationship and you want to see it changed, God's word promises you all things that pertain to life and godliness. If you've got a situation of sickness and disease, symptoms happening in your body, and you know that by his stripes you were healed, and you go to him in prayer, then you know this, that if he hears you, whatever you ask, we know that the answer has been given. See, we don't get the answer when the answer comes. We get the answer when we pray. Put up my next scripture. So how do we do this? In Mark chapter 11, he says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, this is what you have to do. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. He told us almost 2,000 years ago not to be moved by what we see. 
but to be moved by what we believe. And if you believe that you have it, it will show up. Come on. I don't care how long you've been standing. I don't care how long you've been waiting. I don't know how. I don't care how long you've been praying. If you asked it and he promised it in his word, maybe something has gotten involved and is holding it up. But you believe that it is yours and you will see it manifested. And so even though you can apply that to everything, today we're talking about applying that to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go back to Mark 11. I want to show you this. So if you ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, when you pray, when you go to him and ask him, Father, baptize me with the Holy Spirit according to your word. I believe this is for me and I want more of you. He says at that moment that you pray, believe that you receive the word believe means to have faith so he's actually teaching us to receive the baptism of the holy spirit by faith not by what you feel isn't that what second corinthians chapter five and seven says he says for we walk come on by faith and not by sight now what is sight a sight is a physical sense Smell, taste, touch, hearing, smell, you know, all of those are physical senses. So you could say we walk by faith and not by what we feel. And the way to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to walk by faith and not by what you feel. I say that because so many times that I've prayed with people over the decades, I've seen them get to that point where they've asked and they get ready and they're waiting. And if they don't feel anything or hear anything, they don't do anything, and they come back out like, well, I didn't get it. And what he said is, you've got to believe you got it at that moment. Amen? Let me give you some more scripture. The Bible, Jesus said, he was trying to help people understand about being born again, and I'm trying to help you understand about the baptism, and both of those are of the Spirit. In John chapter 3 and verse 8, Jesus said the wind blows where it, where it wants to. Is that true? I know he said it back then, but is that true today? Can we tell the wind, you know what, I don't want it to blow from the south anymore. It's too hot. Blow from the north. Can we? It blows where it wants to. And you hear it, but you can't see it. Is that true? Now, if you said, man, I could see the wind blowing real hard today. That in part is not true. You might be seeing the effects of the wind, but how many can see wind? Now, don't raise your hand because that's a trick question. You can't see the wind, but you can hear the sound of it, or you can hear the effects of it. You can see the leaves roll across the park. You can see the trees that are swaying in the wind, but you can't see it, and you cannot tell where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going. You can't be like... That wind come from China. <laughs> or how about this? Ah, that, that wind comes from Mexico or Louisiana. You don't know where that wind came from, and guess what? You know, I don't care if you're talking about why well, I'm watching the meteorologist. It's, you know, it's going this way. That wind can turn in a dime and go in it for whatever reason. And they don't really know why. Because he says, that's the way it is with the wind. And so it is with everyone who's born again of the Spirit. And the way you gave your life to Christ was by faith. You didn't change on the outside if you were six foot two before you got saved, and you were six foot two after you got saved. You don't base your salvation on your feelings, neither should you base being baptized with the Holy Spirit on your feelings. Sometimes we don't feel saved when we get up in the morning, but that doesn't mean we're not. And you may not feel anything when you pray to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but we don't do it by feelings. We do it by faith. Are you all getting this? Amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says that the just shall live how? By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
We are absolutely a faith church. If you don't learn anything from faith family, you'll learn how to live a life of faith. You know, we'll finish this series and go on to, matter of fact, my very next series is a faith series because it is how we're supposed to live. The only way that we can please God, which life is all about, bringing God pleasure. The only way we can please God is how? By faith. So we need to understand it. We need to live by it. Matter of fact, when you talk about living by something, that means you should do everything you do by faith. Amen. That means you should pay your bills by faith. In other words, you don't don't be moved and be afraid that if I pay this bill, I'm not going to have food for this week. I'm not going to have I'm not going to be able to pay that bill in the future and I'm not going to be able to pay that. And so surely I can't give God the tithe because I got to give the mortgage. Come on, somebody. Don't be moved by fear concerning your finances. You should be moved by faith. Everything you do, you should be married by faith. You should raise your children by faith. Everything you should do by faith, including being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say it's by faith. So let's talk about for a moment. What is faith? I mean, there's a lot of people have a lot of definitions of what it is. I mean, Hebrews 11.1 says uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's kind of cool. But that's actually what faith does. That's not what it is. It's a whole nother teaching. I'll leave it alone. Faith gives substance to the things you hope for. It's the evidence of what you don't see. But what is it? That's what it does. What is it? Actually, when you look it up in the dictionary, the word comes from a Greek word, pistis. If you look it up in a Greek dictionary, how they used it in that time, that Greek word, pistis, simply meant firm persuasion. You didn't check the chair before you sat down because you were firmly persuaded that it would hold your weight. It could have been broke. Somebody could have been doing a prank, but you just ah, sat down by faith, right? Why? Because you were firmly persuaded, you were convinced based on experience of some kind that that chair, when you, put to, when, when you push the button in your car to start it, if you bless like that, amen, or if you like the rest of us and you still got a key to your car, When you, when, you, when you hit that ignition to start, you're doing that by faith. You didn't run out and check the battery cable and check the spark plug cable and check this and, you know, do the full thing. All right, well, here we go. Let's see if it's going to do it. Some of us have to do that, though, you know. <laughs> well, at least we used to long, long time ago. We had to check that off. All right, here we go, you know. No, you just hit the switch. Why? You did it firmly persuaded. When you drop that mail, that, that bill in the, into the mailbox, you do that by, you, you know, that's the United States Postal Service. You don't know that it'll get there. I got to watch myself. We got postmasters. Post, my, my niece is a postal worker. Hey, man, a lot of postal people in here. But when you drop it in that mail, what are you doing? You're firmly persuaded, come on, come on, that it's going to get to where you sent it. Now, if it's not firm, then it's not faith. Because faith is a firm persuasion. So if it's not firm, so what are we saying? When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got to receive by faith. You've got to be firm. You can't be wishy-washy about it. And guess what? It's also, it's not proof. Faith is not proof. It's a persuasion. So in other words, you won't have any sign or indication that you have what you believe because it's not proof. You're persuaded by it. You're convinced of it. Amen? So how do we put this into the the equation? And I'm getting ready to close with this. The only thing left to do at this point is to speak. Because how do we ask? Somebody say, by faith. How do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? By faith. And then what's the last step that we have to do? We have to speak by faith. And this is the part that messes most people up. They have no problem praying that prayer. I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I I want to experience more of God. 
And so when they ask, they don't feel anything. Matter of fact, the weirdest thing is when I pray with them, they, they wait. It's like they're waiting for something. But how do you get baptized with the Holy Spirit? You ask, you receive, and then you speak. Now, without opening your mouth or moving your vocal cords, I want you to say your name. Mm, no, I, I, that was my vocals. Come on. None of us can speak without going through the effort of speaking. And so what's weird in this process of being baptized with the Holy Spirit, people are waiting to, I, I guess, hear something that they're supposed to say or come on y'all y'all working with me now they're waiting to feel something they're, they're looking to hear what somebody else sounds like they're waiting for a feeling they're not doing it by faith and I know I am I, I am hitting the nail on the head right here because that's where most of you wouldn't be in this room if you were like those that didn't want to hear no more of this they was like okay how long is this series okay we see you in September pastor because that's like way over my level but you keep coming you keep coming so you're right at that place but what am I telling you the toughest part is to take a step of faith Watch what this scripture says. This is going to be the primary scripture for next week, and then I'm going to finish this whole thing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, notice what the scripture says. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. I need to break the scripture down. The Bible says, we have received the same spirit of faith. What is he talking about? Paul in this moment is writing to the church at Corinth. They are born again believers. We know that it's not just Paul writing to Corinth. It's the Holy Spirit through Paul speaking to every born again believer. The Bible is not just the Corinthians Bible. It's my Bible. It's God speaking to me. And what Paul is telling me in this verse is that I've got the same spirit of faith that he has. And the way it works in him is how it works in me. How does it work? So all of us have the Holy Spirit in us when we were born again. They were all born again. So notice how it works. I believe, therefore I spoke. Because I'm firmly persuaded, I therefore do what? Speak. Oh, watch this. I want to leave you with this challenge. All you have to do at this point after asking, after receiving, all that's left for you to do is to speak. He's not going to start moving your tongue for you. He's not going to give you some feeling that makes you speak uncontrollably and you can't stop when you want to and you can't start when you want to. No, the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Paul said, I will speak in tongues and I'll speak in my known language. I'll speak, I'll sing in, in the spirit and I'll speak with my known language. But if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, take each one of these steps and take them by faith. Watch this. There's four things I want you to know and remember as true if you're going to take this step of faith challenge. Number one, you can speak words or sounds that you haven't learned. Is that true? Some of you are unsure, but let me help you. You can speak words or sounds. If you don't want to hear somebody talking to you, what do you, la, 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 I don't want to hear that, la, 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 la. Come on, y'all, help me now. Don't leave me out there like that. Have you ever tried to keep somebody, ah, la, 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 how about this? If you've ever sung in a choir, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Y'all leaving me way out there today. Re, mi, fa, si, ti, la, do. Re, mi, la, fa. What is that? Those are sounds, expressions, words that really have no meaning. If you've ever picked up a baby and said, Uchi Kuchi Ku, 
then you have the ability to speak words that have no meaning that you have not learned. I'm preaching good whether y'all quiet or not. So don't do this. Do, don't do this. Don't be goo goo and ga ga with the baby. But then when you get to the moment of being baptized with the Holy Spirit, don't be so unbrave that you don't take a step of faith and begin to speak something that's not your native language. Oh, man, I'm setting you up. I'm thankful that you're allowing me to go slow. Let me give you a little bit more. Por ejemplo, en, es, en español, uh, estoy puede hablar mucho uh, palabras en español uh, por muchos minutos porque yo atender la escuela en otra ciudad de Phoenix, de Arizona. Uh, and entonces yo hablar en español. Now to somebody, most of what I said they could understand. To a whole lot of the rest of us, you have no idea. Matter of fact, you might have thinking, well, hold on, hold on, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to leave because if he's speaking in tongues and he don't come out with the inter and if he don't come out with the interpretation on that, then this is an ungodly church. So before you leave, I was speaking Spanish as best I know how. And I said some things very meaningful to me. But to you, well, for example, the other day, my, I, you know, my wife and I, we were hanging out, and uh, I, wanted her, I wanted to take her to get a pedicure. And, and so I got one, too. Amen. I actually wanted one I needed, so I kind of set her up. Babe, let me take you, you know, because anyway. Well, the lady, I remember sitting there, and I was, you know, just doing my thing. She's, you know, she's, my wife's sitting next to me, and there was another person came in, and this lady, she says, uh, or, or something like that. I don't speak Vietnamese, right? But I'm just describing to you what happened, because I didn't, I didn't say, whoa, 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 Wait, what, what are you saying now? Hold on, hold on. You can't do my toes unless you tell me what you're saying. I didn't have no problem with her speaking in another language because she wasn't talking to me. She was talking to somebody else. And the Bible says when you speak in an unknown tongue, you're not talking to men, but you're talking to God. No man understands him, including yourself, but in the spirit you speak mystery. If you want more of that, then come back next week because it gets like really, really good. I'm really going to emphasize the speak part by faith, which is the toughest part for most people. If you haven't yet received the baptism, it could be that you're stuck at step three. When you get to that moment of taking a step of faith, you're doing a step of feelings. You're waiting to hear something. You're waiting to feel something. You're just trying to stir some emotion up and you're hoping something come out that's unintelligible. And then you could feel like, well, it didn't happen for me and, or it happened for her and it was a great thing. And she and all that. No, 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 no. The by, each one of these are by faith. So the first thing I have to establish, you do have the ability to let words come out of your body that you haven't learned. What's the second thing I need you to remember? Number two, if you decide to take the step of faith and you begin to speak words that you haven't learned, speak loud enough so you can hear. Why is that important? The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, how they knew they were baptized, verse 46 says, for they heard them speak in other tongues and magnify God. In other words, the people in the Bible that, that were baptized and spoke in tongues, they spoke loud enough, even enough for other people to hear them. See, if you take, if you get in that quiet place today and you believe you receive, and you take your step of faith and it's like this. Come on. If you don't say it loud, if you don't speak loud enough for yourself to hear it, the enemy will tell y'all you didn't get it. But if you take a step of faith and all of a sudden something's coming out of your mouth that you haven't learned, come on, y'all help me now. It builds your confidence like you can't imagine. So if you do take this step of faith challenge, do it loud enough so you can hear it. Number three. Number three is I know you're not playing with God. When I grew up in church, 
you know, my brothers and I, we literally grew up, my, my sister, my brothers and I, we grew up in church from the time I was a child. I mean, the year I was born, my dad graduated from seminary. And so we would play church because, you know, we're always at the church. So we had preaching and we'd do some dancing. My wife yesterday, she showed me something on Facebook. She said, this is, she was like, look, this is something else. And so on Facebook, somebody had a clip of pray. Y'all, I know we don't do a lot of praise dancing here, which is okay. If you want to praise dance, you can praise dance. But in this particular clip on YouTube, they were coming down the aisle. <laughs> they were doing all this jumping. I know that might bother some people. Why? Because I'm playing. See, I grew up in church. We play church. And there will be people that tell them, no, no, you know, you know, no, 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 no. The Bible said blasphemy with the Holy Spirit. There's no sin that you can be forgiven of. And the blasphemy with the Holy Spirit, you cannot be forgiven of. So we knew, oh, you know, oh, you can't play. Oh. And there's a lot of people here right now listening to me online. One of the reasons why you don't take that step of faith is a pastor. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be dancing up there like that, Pastor. Ooh, you up there in the front. Ooh, you can't play with the great things of God. If you want this, I know you're not playing with God. I already know you're not. And so you need to know that you're not. If you're going to take this step of faith, know that you're not playing. If you take a step of faith and allow sounds and utterances and expressions to come out of your body that you haven't learned, the enemy will, ooh, 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 you, oh, you playing, you playing. Because listen, if, if you allow words and expressions and things to come out of your body and you don't understand them, your mind is going to give you a fit. And the enemy has access to put thoughts in your mind. Oh, you playing, ooh, <laughs> y'all got to help me. I'm going to keep doing this. Ooh, you playing with God. You, that ain't right. That ain't right. You, and hit me, hit me, the enemy will mess with you. There have been people that used to teach that speaking in tongues is of the devil. Or you got to watch speaking in tongues. You might end up with some devil tongue. When the Bible says that if you know how to give good gifts to your children, he's not going to give you a snake. Come on now. He's not going to give you a scorpion. He's not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. Ooh, you going to, ooh. <laughs> Say it out loud. You're not playing with God. Okay, so if you decide to take this step of faith challenge, know that you're not playing with I know you're not. But do it and watch what happens. The last one, and I'm going to let you go, is be okay with saying something that's not your native language. When you take this step of faith to begin to speak in the quiet and the privacy of your prayer closet, after you ask by faith for the Holy Spirit, after you receive by faith, that is, the answer is now. When you say in Jesus name and you just take that step of faith and begin to be okay with something coming out of your mouth that's not English or what you have learned. Amen. Stand up on your feet. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now stay with me. Don't, don't turn the internet off. Don't shut anything down. Because I got to share a testimony. Brother Malcolm Prophet, he's on our drums right now. Seven or eight weeks ago, I had been ministering to the worship team. And I felt, because I'm the leader of the worship team, I'm not a singer, I'm not a player, I'm their pastor. And it, because of the importance of the ministry, I, I stayed with them and connected to them. And I felt like, and I still feel like, that in our worship at Faith Family, there's another level. There's a level of an anointing. There's a level of an experience to bring the manifest presence of God that we haven't entered into. You can almost sense that today. I'm not going to act like what happened didn't happen. It happened. All right. And it, and it, you know, it's just, it wasn't as smooth or as powerful as it could be. And that had been bothering me uh, for, for, for a long while. And one of the things that God dealt with me in my heart 
was about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I began to minister to our worship team during our rehearsals. And I said, hey, there's a next level. And the Spirit of God has put this in me about the baptism of the Holy. This is like six or eight weeks ago. Half of them, only half of them, were baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking other tongue at that time. And I told them, look, you're not forced to do this. But if you want to experience the next level as a team, then we need to be all in one place and on one accord, right? And so Brother Malcolm, he had been saved since he was a child. 50 plus years in the church as a minister of music, playing in bands, not for the world, but for the kingdom for just decade after decade after decade. I remember the night that we, I shared this and I wanted the feedback because, you know, I don't go down the aisle and ask you all in a public group how many of you are baptized and how many of you are not. But in a, in a small group and in in, in, they're all believers. Hey, how many of you are baptized with the Holy Spirit? How many of you all speak with other tongues? Only half and even half of the half weren't doing it every day and so i challenged them and actually as i began to pray i realized this is something that we as faith there's another level for faith family church and you're about to see us manifest that next level you know why because we're about to receive power come on from god after the holy spirit comes upon us we have physically outgrown this facility we're in the summertime and we're packed in both services. When Back to Church Sunday comes, you're going to want to get here early or come to the early service because it's just, I mean, and, and, you know, this building won't be able to contain. And that's just where we are now. There's greater to come. So over 50% in the church right now, even what you're listening to, I sense it without asking for hands. You do not have the baptism because you don't speak in other tongues. I shared with brother malcolm two weeks ago he said pastor i'm ready on the night that i shared eight weeks ago he was like matter of fact he told me pastor i i, I didn't heard all of that i didn't been to church and uh it'll happen when it happened but as far as i'm concerned you know i i just i mean i didn't heard everything <laughs> come on somebody last night two weeks ago I, i've been ministering on this i said if you're ready if you want to receive text the word spirit he came to me he said pastor i'm ready i i, I want this i want to be baptized with the holy ghost but every time I look for a time, I didn't have the release yet to meet with him. I met with others. Other people have been baptized and been speaking in tongues. But he's been heavy on my heart. And last night when we were setting up the drums, I said to him, I said, hey, listen, I haven't forgotten about you, but I'm going to minister a message tomorrow that I believe is exactly where you need. So I want you to listen. And I begin to explain to him that the key is getting past the brain. See, what speaking in tongues is, and you'll find this out next week, it's brain bypass surgery. It's a procedure that bypasses the brain. When you're speaking in tongues, your mind doesn't understand it. But your mind can also block it and keep you from doing it. Because your mind has to send a signal to your lungs, to your, 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 your vocal cords, to your mouth to move. Your mind has to send the signal to your mouth to move. Say your name out loud right now and say Stanley or whatever. Go ahead. Say Stanley. See, your mind accepted, okay, I could do that. I could, I could say my name. All right, I want to, and I'll say my name. You did that as an act of your will. Your will is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And he was dealing with a mental block. And I said, I'm going to challenge the people on tomorrow to take a step of faith and to speak by faith. He said he went home last night and he prayed, Father, I want this. I'm asking you to baptize me. Whatever it is, this is what he prayed. Whatever the blockage is that's keeping me from this next level, I know, God, you've got more for me. He said, Pastor, he came in this morning and walked up the aisle, and I knew something had happened. He's walking up the aisle, and he said, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. I said, what is it? He said, this morning on August the 18th at 6.45 a.m. in my bathroom while I was getting ready, so I just began to speak. Oh, my gosh, Pastor, that's just something. Whoa! Glory to God! And for so many... Brother Ken, give me a little more mic. For so many, 
It's happened that way for my wife, for one. It happened that way. It wasn't in a service. It wasn't in a big emotional time. It was in their own prayer closet, in their living room, on their couch, on their bed. And while nobody was looking and listening and getting on, they just began to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you today? Hallelujah. I know I'm over time. But if you want to be saved, I want you to follow me in this prayer. If you want to rededicate your life, maybe you've done some things and you're not pleased. God's not pleased and you want to repent. But if you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to lead you in this prayer right now. If you mean it from your heart, you don't have to do you don't have to take the step of faith right now. But I'll, I'll pray with you. And then the only thing left to do is get in a place of prayer. Remind him of what you believe you receive and it'll happen. Amen. Pray this out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God, that he died for me, bearing my sins for me. They put him in a grave, but I believe he is alive. Come into my heart. Save me from my sins. Lord, I repent for all my sins, for the things I've said, the things I've done, the places I've gone, the things I've seen that are not pleasing to you. And I accept by faith your offer of forgiveness. Therefore, I am forgiven. Cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. And I'm asking you also to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Please give me my heavenly prayer language. I receive it right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So take the step of faith. Don't miss next week. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him, don't miss next week. Turn to the neighbor on the other side. Say, don't miss next week. Amen. We're going to give you the conclusion to this matter. I promise to be finished. My next series after this one is on the subject of faith. You're not forced to get it, but if you want it, there it is. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget, we will be recording some video clips of just what has Faith Family Church meant to you so we can show it on our.